Edward VIII, also known as Edward Albert Christian George Andrew Patrick David, was born on June 23, 1894, in Richmond, Surrey, England. He was the eldest son and second child of King George V and Queen Mary. His mother was the first cousin, once removed of Queen Victoria, and his father was the second son of King Edward VII. Edward was educated at various institutions, including Osborne Naval College, the Royal Naval College, and Magdalen College, Oxford. He left Oxford after eight terms without any qualifications. He was known for his love of sports, especially tennis and golf, and was a skilled athlete. In 1911, at the age of 17, Edward was made Prince of Wales in a ceremony at Carnarvon Castle in Wales and became heir apparent to the throne. Edward was known for his social life, and he was popular with the younger generation. During World War I, Edward served in the British Army, he joined the Grenadier Guards in June 1914, and was made captain by 1916. Although he was willing to fight alongside his men on the front lines, it was decided by the British government that he should refrain from fighting at the front for fear of the damage it would do if he was captured by the enemy. Despite this, Edward visited the front lines as often as he could and was awarded the Military Cross in 1916, he was a popular leader of his men and amongst veterans in the conflict. After the war he travelled extensively throughout the British Empire and beyond, visiting Canada, Australia, India, United States and South America. He received much public attention due to his good looks, fashion sense, rank and unmarried status. Edward had many affairs and romances, some of whom were with married women, during the 1920s and 30s, so much so that this worried then Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin, and his father George V. King George is said to have commented, after I am dead, the boy will ruin himself in 12 months. In 1930 he met Wallace Simpson, an American divorcee and started a relationship with her. Edward was created Earl of Wessex in 1934, and he was later made Duke of Windsor in 1937. Following the death of his father, King George V, on January 20, 1936, Edward became king. He was due to be crowned as King Edward VIII on May 12, 1937, in a lavish ceremony at Westminster Abbey, however he had already abdicated by then and so the coronation never took place. Edward's reign was short-lived, lasting only 326 days. His relationship with Wallace Simpson, an American socialite who was divorced twice, led to a constitutional crisis that ultimately resulted in his abdication. Many members of the British government and the royal family were opposed to the marriage because it violated the Church of England's teachings on divorce. Edward abdicated on December 11, 1936, and his brother, Albert, later King George VI, succeeded him to the throne. Edward was given the title of Duke of Windsor, and he married Wallace Simpson in France on June 3, 1937. No members of the royal family were in attendance at the wedding, on instruction from King George VI. Relations between Edward, now Duke of Windsor and the rest of the royal family were strained for years to come. He wanted to come back and live in Britain, but was told his allowance would be cut off if he did, and so he remained in France. So, after his abdication, Edward and Wallace lived in France, where they were visited by many high-profile individuals, including Winston Churchill and Charles de Gaulle. Edward remained interested in politics and visited Germany during the early years of Adolf Hitler's reign, against the advice of the British government. This led to controversy, with many people accusing Edward of being sympathetic to the Nazi regime. In 1940, due to the Second World War, Edward could no longer stay in Europe and so he was appointed governor of the Bahamas, where he served until 1945. He took his duties seriously and worked to improve the lives of the Bahamian people. His tenure was generally regarded as a success. Although Edward did not enjoy his stay, and privately thought the Bahamas a third-class colony. After leaving the Bahamas, Edward and Wallace returned to France, where they lived in several different locations. They also traveled extensively, visiting many countries around the world. During the 50s and 60s, the couple were treated like celebrities of cafe society, hosting parties and shuttling between Paris and New York. In June 1953, he watched on TV, the coronation of Elizabeth II, his niece, instead of attending the coronation, which he said would be contrary to precedent. Edward was an avid collector of art and memorabilia. His collection included many items related to the British royal family, including portraits, letters, and documents. He was particularly interested in the history of his own family and their role in British history. Edward died on May 28, 1972, of throat cancer, in Paris, France, at the age of 77. Edward's death was mourned by many, and his funeral was attended by members of the British royal family and other dignitaries. 
He was buried in the Royal Burial Ground at Frogmore, near Windsor Castle, next to his parents, King George V and Queen Mary. Wallace Simpson died in 1986, of dementia aged 89, and was buried alongside her husband. Despite his controversial abdication, Edward remained a popular figure in many parts of the world. He was admired for his charm, charisma, and easygoing nature. He was also known for his philanthropy and his support of various charitable causes. Edward's legacy is a complicated one. While he was widely liked by the public, his actions during the 1930s and his relationship with Wallace Simpson continue to be controversial. Many historians argue that he was naive and did not fully understand the political implications of his actions. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in Edward's life and reign, particularly in his role during World War II. Some historians have suggested that he may have been involved in secret peace negotiations with Germany, although this is a matter of debate. The story of Edward's abdication has been the subject of numerous books, movies, and television shows. One of the most famous is the 2010 film, The King's Speech, which tells the story of his brother Albert's struggle with a speech impediment and his eventual ascension to the throne. Edward's abdication also had far-reaching consequences for the British monarchy. It led to a strengthening of the royal family's ties with the Church of England and a greater emphasis on the institution's role as a symbol of national unity. It also helped to cement the idea of the monarchy as a stable and enduring institution, despite the many challenges it has faced over the years. Despite the controversy surrounding his reign, Edward remains an important figure in British history. His life and legacy continue to be studied and debated by historians, and his influence can still be felt in many aspects of British culture and society.